Hi, I'm Alicia Malone, and with Thursday being Martin Scorsese's birthday, we've given him control of TCM tonight. So far, he's taking us to Poland with Ashes and Diamonds, and Italy with the Gospel According to St. Matthew. And now, for his final pick, we're travelling to France to watch Jules and Jim from director Francois Truffaut in 1962. In his note to us about why he picked this film, Martin Scorsese wrote that, quote, Truffaut's third film, based on Henri Pierre Rocher's autobiographical novel, was like a wind that blew all the clouds out of the sky. It was a period film that felt absolutely immediate, a film about romance and romantic fantasy that was piercing and clear-eyed, a celebration of life and a frank recognition of tragedy and loss, and a beautiful expression of the bohemian spirit and approach to living. That is exactly what you're about to see with a screenplay by Francois Truffaut and Jean Gruyot and cinematography by French New Wave favourite Raoul Coutard. This story is set around World War I in France, Germany and Austria and thanks to the energetic direction of Truffaut still feels modern today. And it follows a love triangle between two best friends, the Austrian Jules, played by Oscar Werner, and the French Jim, played by Henri Sœur and the troubled but charming Catherine played brilliantly by Jean Moreau. Truffaut was careful to preserve the quick, energetic style of the book, and that was something Martin Scorsese was inspired by when he saw the film. As Scorsese wrote to us, the first few minutes of the picture, a rapid-fire introduction to Jules and Jim and the beginnings of their friendship, shocked me with its force, its driving rhythm, its freedom. I thought, what would it be like to make a whole film that way? Many years later, the opening of Truffaut's film influenced Goodfellas, Casino and The Wolf of Wall Street. From 1962, enjoy Jules and Jim. Director Francois Truffaut had admired the sparse and effective writing of Henri Pierre Rocher, who wrote the novel Jules and Jim is based on. Truffaut compared him to Jean Cocteau, saying that Rocher achieved the same kind of poetic prose using a less extensive vocabulary and making ultra-short sentences from everyday words. And Truffaut, being one of the most experimental directors working in France during the 1960s, shot this film almost entirely without sound, with the dialogue being dubbed later on, except for Catherine's song. One of the ideas behind this choice was to keep the crew small. Cinematographer Raoul Coutard used a smaller camera, and usually it was just Truffaut, Coutard and his focus puller on set, allowing for an intimate production ripe with creativity. As I mentioned before the movie, Martin Scorsese, who chose this film for us to watch tonight, was deeply inspired by Truffaut's masterpiece. Thank you, Mr. Scorsese, for sharing your thoughts and your movie choices with all of us on TCM tonight. It's been a pleasure and happy birthday on Thursday. That's all for Scorsese's picks, but I know he'd also appreciate the next film we have coming up because it's a love letter to French cinema, directed by Bertrand Tavernier.